Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for Max Cookie. Today we'll focus on uh, uh, an introduction, a free introduction to Corona Renderer. Uh, Corona is a new rendering engine uh, under development. It is an ambiated uh, uh, rendering engine, so it is uh, uh, really uh, different from the other rendering engine we know as the, uh, for example, Mental Ray or V-Ray. Uh, it's used the same algorithm in any way, uh, really similar to, uh, for example, Maxwell Render or, for example, uh, Octane or, for example, uh, Arnold uh, uh, Renderer. So it is under development. Uh, actually, we have the uh, version Alpha 6. Uh, it is actually free to be used also on commercial project. And uh, obviously it will be... Uh, uh, in the future it will be a commercial package but actually you can use it, test it and it is really really amazing because it is under development, it is an alpha stage but the product is really mature and the quality is really really high and you have a lot of feature. Uh, there we have the website, it is www.coronarender.com and you can see some rendering tests, I think that you saw something about it over the web too, you see that the quality is really amazing. Obviously, rendering time is not so fast because we are talking about uh, a physically based rendering, but it is really fast to be an ambassador. So, there on the website, you have a gallery, you have the possibility to read some information about the product, and if you like, uh, you can obviously uh, start to test the uh, the, uh, the rendering engine. So, to download the engine, you have to uh, uh, access to the forum. So you have to go inside the forum and you have to register, and then you can access to the forum. So you can have contact with the developers, uh, finding tools, tutorials, and whatever else, and you can uh, download for free the software. You have also actually a new blog. Uh, it was prepared to, uh, for the uh, Alpha 6 launch. You see that we have some information there, for example, the installation guide and table shoot the shooting. So if you have some problem, you can follow uh, the, uh, the guide there at this uh, website. You have all the information, but I have uh, to, say, to say that it is really, really simple. So. You have just to launch the installation, decide which uh, 3ds Max version are you using, and then that's all. Uh, so I think that uh, we can start uh, doing something, and I like to introduce the current render, and we uh, will make some tests just to understand how it works. So in 3ds Max, obviously, you'll have the possibility to work now with a new rendering engine. And I mean, we have there inside the production rendering engine, we have Corona Renderer. So now you have the settings there. Uh, and it's really amazing because you see, uh, we have a lot of options, but we can have also really simple uh, settings if we like. So we have no time to find uh, settings or maybe uh, it is too complex to, uh, to make something so we can decide to have some really simple uh, uh, setup and then work with it uh, without problems. We have a lot of feature to control the uh, various algorithms to calculate the global illumination. A really nice addiction is that now you see we have the uh, pop-up to see a description about the feature. So you see uh, we can move over every single uh, panel or command and then we can see how it works, uh, what this means, and how we have to use it so we can uh, decide uh, to study uh, the rendering engine also using directly the interface and checking all the properties there. Uh, the, uh, the rendering you see uh, basically as different way. It can be progressive, so as the other ambassador rendering. So we'll see progressively the announcement of the rendering and see the quality uh, going better and better. Or we can have also the old bucket rendering as the older rendering engine. 
It has uh, its sound uh, virtual frame buffer, and it is really powerful. Just to understand how it works, uh, we can prepare something really simple. Um, it is compatible with a feature in 3ds Max, the basic feature, and it is compatible with a lot of features from uh, V-Ray 2. So we can use, for example, some kind of material coming with uh, V-Ray or some maps too. So that's uh, a scene, a really basic scene. Obviously, we have the rendering engine, and inside the material editor, we have uh, its sound materials. And you see that also the preview inside the material editor is changing. So we see something more similar to a final rendering with a nice illumination to see how the material looks. And there, if we go to start the material, you see that now we have the Corona light material, for example, the Corona material, the portal, the volume material. So we have uh, some nice addiction to control the uh, various parameter in uh, Corona. And you see that there we have also some maps. Um, obviously, we have the Corona light. So there you see that we have the Corona light and the Corona sun. And about the camera, we can use the standard camera from 3ds Max. Um, we can see uh, the, uh, the victim frame buffer just to understand how it works. So uh, if we go to render, uh, we leave all the parameters as default. We are doing nothing just to understand how it works. So uh, let's use a lower resolution. Okay, it's nice. Uh, let's go to render. And you see that it is opening this view. And you see that it's working, making passes. And it's saying how much time it is rendering. So you see that's the written for buffer. And you see that we see nothing actually just because uh, we are working uh, with a, uh, a scene without lights. We have no physical light sources to create illumination. We can stop the render. And you see that then we can re-render this stuff. There we have the various uh, passes, and you see that we have just the alpha, but obviously it has a complete control over the passes. And you see that there we have all the passes supported by Corona, and are really, really great because uh, you see that uh, there is a subdivision, uh, for example, for essential. So we have the direct lighting, the emission, the indirect lighting, the reflection, the refraction, and translucency. Then we have something related to geometry. So you see that's corona essential, and then we have corona geometry, and we have some passes related to the geometry. So we have, for example, the normals, uh, we have the, the, uh, the UV uh, map coordinates, the word position, and the Z-depth. Uh, then we have something related to masking. So you see we have corona masking a D and corona masking mask and then corona masking white color. And then we have something related to the shading. So we have the albedo, uh, the uh, alpha, uh, the components, shadows, and the soul. We have also the texture map. So we have some really nice render elements. Uh, if, we have, uh, if we add something inside there, obviously then we can access there in a really similar way as we can do for um, uh, V-Ray. Uh, then uh, you see that there we have the possibility to save the image. So we can click over save and then we can save the image. We have there the possibility to copy to the virtual frame buffer from 3ds Max. So if we render something, we click there. And then obviously now we have nothing because it is black, but it is copying. Then we can copy this image in the uh, clipboard and then you can paste it in uh, other software. We have the refresh to refresh the image. We can uh, erase and we have the possibility to remove the stats there with all the information, the statistics. Uh, there we have the statistics and then we have the distributed rendering. So uh, in this version, the Alpha 6, you have also the distributed rendering that's really, really powerful. We have also the possibility to stop the rendering, save the rendering in a, a Corona file format and then restart the rendering from the point we were rendering before. So uh, let's start seeing what happens if we have a light source and we can start with a really simple light sources. So I'm doing something like that and move it there. Uh, let's go for a shaded view. That's 
obviously uh, a corona light so we have all the uh, information we need uh, let's read work there so we have the shape okay and you see that uh, it is really simple because we have not so much parameters we have essentially uh, the intensity, we have the possibility to have the target, so you see uh, when needed we can have the target, we have the include and exclude as uh, 3ds max, we have the intensity and we have there the possibility to decide how it is ex expressed the value, so that's the default value, it is that, and then we have the candela, the lumen and the looks. We have the possibility to decide the, the color or we have the possibility to decide the Kelvin temperature, so we have access to both way. Then we have something related to the shape. There we are saying that we have a sphere, a rectangle, a disc, or a cylinder. And obviously for everyone, we have all the parameters. Obviously some, uh, some shape has no parameters uh, that are uh, shape as. For example, the, the rectangle has no segments, but as the direct uh, the directionality and you see that also there we have the possibility to access to the pop-up to uh, know something about the feature if we go in the sphere for example we have no direction but we have the segments and then we have the possibility to control the uh, visibility so we have the visibility and usage inside it directly uh, pass the reflection the refraction and the possibility to occlude other lights. So if we have some lights behind this one, it will be occluded or not. And then we have uh, the gizmo sides inside the viewport, just for uh, a visualization uh, purpose. Then we have the possibility to control the uh, high he has. So if you have an high he has file, it is in understory and understory file format to simulate real light from the market, you can uh, load it and use it. So now we have a light inside uh, the uh, our scene. So if we go to render, you see that something is happening because now we have light. And it's not so much as you can see, but it is doing something. So we can stop. And there we see that we have just 50 W. Uh, we can use 200. W, it will be obviously a lot more lighting, and you see that the lighting is going in a better way. Obviously, this scene setup is really simple, so it needs really uh, a low amount of passes to have something visible and uh, something with no grain or no faking uh, over uh, uh, faking artifacts over the rendering. Um, that's just basically the uh, the usage. So you see, we have uh, the possibility, obviously, to create some material. So let's say, for example, that's the ground. We go to assign this one, and we go to use a corona material. Uh, the corona material is simple too. You see that we have the diffusion, the reflection, the refraction the opacity, the absorption, and the displacement. Then we have some parameters to control the self-illumination. And uh, just a note, if you like to have self-illumination over uh, a material, it's okay to use the self-illumination. But if you like to use uh, some shape as main lights, main light sources inside the scene, it is better to use directly the uh, corona light material and you see there is the note also over the surface. Then we have some uh, options about for example the rounded corner uh, over a mesh and we have for example the uh, G buffer and the alpha channel so we can decide uh, if for example a material has transparent or solid alpha channel. Then we have the access to all the maps. So the material is really simple but it is really powerful. So uh, let's go to use a map and we go to use something maybe from a previous tutorial. So we go inside our tutorial folder and that's 
Okay, there's one texture and we have just a wood pavement. Okay, let's open it. You see the material there. And let's go to remove the blurring. And uh, we go to have uh, a little bit of reflection. So let's put this map there as a copy. And then there you, we use a color correction. Keep all map as submap. We go to have a saturation and then we go to have a little bit of reflectivity. And then we have the possibility to control, you see, uh, the level. So in this way we are controlling how much reflection and in this way the coloring of the reflection. So let's go for maybe 0 0.5 just to make some tests. Then we have the fractional IRR. Let's go for 1.6. And then we have the glossiness. You see that the glossiness is controlling the, the focus over the surface. Let's try with 0, uh, 3. And then we use the same map using the copy. And we'll put this map inside the bump. So we are doing a really uh, simple material, nothing so special. Uh, let's go there just to have a little bit more blurring in the um, um, bump map. Uh, if we go to render, obviously now we have a wood plane. Uh, I like to add more light because you see it is really low. So let's go. Actually, we are not using other uh, tools about the rendering, so we are not taking care about the uh, exposure or something like that. So uh, it's just a test. Uh, let's go to have a plane. Let's go to render, and you see that we are starting to have a really nice illumination. It is obviously high, actually, so uh, let's go to have this one as controlled by the Kelvin temperature. So if we go to use the Kelvin temperature in this way, we are creating a cold lighting. If we go lower, let's say something like that, it will be an off lighting. So you see the coloring is changing depending on the uh, uh, light intensity there. We have no direct uh, direction, so it is really not going straight to the teapot. Let's go to have a 104 intensity. So we have a little bit of lighting there, and then we have the other illumination coming from there. Stop and go to uh, control again the lighting there. And they like to have more reflectivity. And then we change a little bit the uh, glossiness. Let's go for 0 0.6. So it will be higher and we'll have more reflectivity. You see that now we are starting to see more reflectivity over the bump there. And obviously uh, we can go higher to have less uh glossiness about this one okay so um let's go to have a material a simple material let's go for example to a, a chrome material just to understand basically how it works and we go to have a corona material and we'll play with it as we'll play with other uh uh, rendering engine for the moment so we are not using something strange or uh, complex about uh, the rendering engine uh, it is really nice you see to have a really good preview inside the viewport uh, inside the material editor because we have uh, uh, the right feeling about the uh, lighting let's go to have for example 12 for the fractional fractional uh, IRR let's go to have a little bit of anisotropy, but before I like to have just a little bit of glossiness. So let's go to have maybe a little bit more, and we'll have more anisotropy. Let's go for 0 0.6, actually, to have something more metallic. Um, let's go to, uh, to render gain. Okay, and we have a really nice material 
there. Okay, if we have an environment, obviously we'll have a reflection of the environment and everything will be uh, better. And if you like, we can have, for example, an environment directly there or we can have it inside the uh, Corona Render setup. Now I like to apply uh, this uh, little knowledge we have about Corona just to make a simple illumination for an environment. And we have the environment we used on a previous tutorial for V-Ray and we can use it to tweak the illumination just about the uh, HDR lighting. So uh, in a future tutorial, we'll be able to start preparing the complete lighting using Corona. So that's our uh, scene we prepared for uh, V-Ray and the photoreal uh, interior rendering with V-Ray. The models are really low quality. It is not that's the most important part. I like just to show you how to start playing with the lighting for an interior with Corona. Actually, all the uh, object has the same material. So I'm talking about the base material prepared with the Corona. So it's just a uh, gray color. You know, obviously uh, we have to remove, let's hide this one. And I think we'll have also some kind of visible objects, uh, grip, open. Uh, we have something at the uh, window. Let's rotate. Let's pick this one group, open, and we can remove it. And let's get to remove also this one. So grip, open, and we remove this one. Okay, nice. So we have the possibility to light the scene. The scene can be light using, for example, a, v, uh, a Corona render sunlight. Uh, let's prepare a camera from this point of view just to have something. Okay. So um, let's go to remove this one. Okay, perfect. So let's go to have a Corona Sun. The Corona Sun, it's really simple. You see, we are creating as the other tools and then we have created. Then you see, we have the tool, we have the intensity, we have the sun sides, and that's the sides about the, uh, the disc that is emitting the light. Obviously 1.0 is a physically based parameter, but you can tune it to have a different result. And then we have the inclusion and exclusion as the all the lights inside 3ds max about the color we can pick the color from the sky or we can use a direct input to put the light or we can use the kelvin temperature as the other light sources we have the possibility to uh, use a texture to create the uh, the color lighting and then we have the visibility and that's all so you see we have not so uh, much uh, information about the sun but everything that is necessary and then we have the sun position the sun position can be adjusted using the uh, rotation so you see we are moving the sun and we have the angle so we can rise up or down the sun position uh, let's imagine that we go for rotation so we have the illumination coming from there with this inclination if we go to uh, render, uh, let's go to render on the first frame, but let's go lower, 7020, and we'll use the basic value there. You see that it's starting, and we have the illumination. Uh, as you see, the render actually is grainy, but we have a really nice illumination created just with uh, one single light. And that's really amazing. So you see that it's continually, uh, it's continuing to uh, light the scene. So it is uh, creating a better and better illumination. So the grain will go away and the illumination will be better than before. Uh, you see that there we have the exposure control. We can activate the exposure control. And the really nice thing is that we can control in real time the exposure control. So you see, we can tweak the illumination about the exposuring directly by hand there. Then you see that we have also the possibility to have more or less contrast 
and we can control also for example the white balance so we are changing the lighting color so in this way we have for example a colder image and in the other way rising up we have an odd image but you see it is amazing and it is still rendering so you see it is still rendering after two minutes we have a really clean image and it is really good that we have the possibility to control in real time because we can tweak the illumination without any issue, without any problem and everything is really really fast and really high quality. Uh, we have the possibility you see to control also just one channel about the output so we can create really nice looking illumination and mood about the image just tweaking a little bit the color exposure. As you see the render there is really nice also at three minutes so it is really fast and you see that the quality is really nice. Actually we are illuminating using the uh, sun but uh, you see that the shadows quality is uh, I think amazing. Uh, you know we use it a lot of engine but this one is really really great and the speed is really not bad. So that's the illumination done using the sun so you know you can control the color you can control the exposure you can move the sun position etc etc we can see for example what happened if we have the sun coming from the other point there so we have a different illumination because you see the sun is entering from there and there we have no uh, sun inside the room but we can see how the quality is also when the illumination is more complex and you see that it's preparing the illumination, you see that the sun is coming just from this point, so we have the sun there, then we have just the, uh, the shadows. Obviously, having the, um, the control about the exposure gives us the possibility to have a different illumination. So you see there we can control the illumination out, and there we can have less contrast to have a little bit more illumination coming up. And then you see that we have, again, the possibility to control the lighting there. Another thing you can do is that there you see inside the uh, global camera operation and settings, you can change the settings for the, the camera. And I mean, you can change, as you see, all the settings for the camera. And you have this option, override scene camera camera mode uh, settings. You know that how our cameras has no settings for the physically uh, rendering uh, about Corona, but we have a modifier. So let's select the camera. And then inside the modifier, you see that we have Corona cam mode, and then we have the settings there. And we have also the possibility to activate the depth of field. If we go to render now, it is using the settings we have inside the camera. That means that if we go there and we say that the ISO is 300, obviously it is uh, controlling the illumination and you see that we have more light inside the scene. So let's go back. But you know that inside the rendering, you have the possibility to override. So if you don't want to use this one, you can go there and set, for example, to 450 to have more light. Then it is starting to prepare the scene. And you see that it's illuminating. Uh, you have to see that the illumination is, I think, amazing. The light is going inside just from the air. There we have a really cold lighting, uh, uh, hot lighting from the sun. And then there we have the lighting coming just from the uh, general environment uh, settings and uh, coloring. And it is, I think, Amazing, really, really amazing. Uh, sorry. So uh, that's just basically the sun illumination, and you can tune up as you want. Obviously, uh, we have a lot of control, but I like to see how we can light a scene using an HDR map. So let's stop and close. So uh, we can remove the sun. Maybe uh, I can save this one as sun lighting. So you have the scene. And now we remove the sun and we need to illuminate using an HDR map. So, you know, uh, it is really simple. Uh, you know that uh, you have the 
there we have the environment so you see we have the possibility to control uh, the overriding and we have the possibility to control the environment using the uh, 3ds max settings and I mean this one let's remove the V-Ray or you can use the Corona one so you can set a map and there we have different possibility we can for example use the Corona Sky and that's really similar to the V-Ray Sky um, so it is simulating the uh, gradient uh, out of the scene or we have the possibility to load the HDR map the HDR map can be loaded using the bitmap or if you want you can use directly the V-Ray HDR map if you have the V-Ray installed. So it is compatible with Corona. Let's go to load it as a standard map. We load this one. This map comes from HDRE iyub. Let's go to load this one. And for the moment you see that we have uh, essentially the basic uh, value and uh, we can use the 32 bits so we have the exposure there we have the default exposure is this one and in this way we have the possibility to control uh, the uh, the lighting of the scene but for the moment we okay let's set back to the default value and let's go to load this one let's go with no exposure, just with this value there. Okay, we have this map. We can copy inside there as an instance. And it is a spherical environment. Okay. Let's see what happens if we try to render now the scene. Okay. You see that it's starting to have something and it is related to the, the lighting inside our our scene. Um, you know that obviously we can go inside the rendering there and we can tune the lighting of the scene. So you see that we can decide how much lighting is coming inside. We can decide to have a different lighting and again we can have less we can go back to have the default value to have the real illumination coming from uh, the one we are using so now we have a neutral lighting there we have obviously again the possibility to have more or less contrast and there we have the compression of the highlight so we can decide how much lighting is coming inside directly from there or if you want, we can have a different setting for the map. So uh, going back to the map, and I like to see the map also inside the viewport. So we can just for a moment uh, put this one there, assistance, and there we can say, uh, viewport background environment map so we see the map directly there and from the material we can rotate the map to have a different setting so you see we have oh sorry we have the possibility to um, to change it rotating the map so let's go to have, for example, the sunlight there. And if we go to render this time, we'll have, you see the lighting coming from there. In this case, so let's go to add something really nice and useful. And I mean, uh, we go to create, uh, first of all, let's set to off. And we go to add the Corona portal. In this way, we'll help to have the right illumination catching over the the, uh, the window. So let's go in a uh, perspective, and we can create from there. The portal uh, needs to be a really simple uh, mesh. So 
We can go, for example, for a plane and a plane. It is better to have no segments. So really a basic plane. Let's go to move it. Okay. The first one is there. And let's create a Corona portal material. Let's copy and put the other one there. Let's find the right dimension. Okay. Um, let's go to check if we need another one. And I'm sure that we have the other window. So let's copy. And let's move this one inside. And then we scale it. Okay. So uh, go back to the camera and we re render the scene using the same value we used before. Okay, and we have the scene that is starting to be illuminated. Um, let's go in the rendering parameters. And obviously there we can tune or not the illumination. And we have the possibility to control also the exposure in this way. So you see we are controlling the illumination using this map. And now let's go to load uh, the map with uh, uh, the standard uh, um, settings. So let's stop back in the rendering. And here I like to pick this one. Um, let's create a new bitmap. Okay, and let's load it with the default value just to see what happens when we have the default value for our illumination. And then let's remove that camera. We remove the Corona camera modifier and we remove the override also there. And let's get to render. And that's the illumination with the default value. So uh, now we have to tweak it, obviously, as you see. So we can go back in the rendering there. And we can go to use, for example, the photographic exposure. And you see that we can go back to control better the highlight compression or we can go back to have the illumination done in this way and find the best illumination you want so we can tweak it as needed. Um, if we like to have more uh, precise illumination there from this map we have just to go inside the texture and you can change the contrast. Changing the contrast will give you the possibility to have uh, less um, uh, soft shadows. So let's go to have more contrast and less brightness. So you see I am concentrating the lighting just on one point. So if we go to render the rendering will be a little bit different than before because we are focusing the illumination just over some points and uh, it will work in this way. So again, we can rotate the map 
there to be sure that we are using the right one we go inside the rendering and we copy as instance this one so we are tweaking for sure the right map um, we have there the rotation we can go back to the standard rotation we had before and if we go to render we have the basic lighting we had before so that's the lighting we have the, with this kind of light sources we can do the same using a, a, a light portal also on the other uh, wind of deer so let's add it clone as a copy rotate by 90 degree and then we can move it let's go in a perspective and we move it to put inside the window back in the camera back in the rendering and you see that it's starting to illuminate and we are sure that we have the right illumination catching in this way if we go back to uh, the rendering we have again there the possibility to control the illumination let's go with the photographic exposure and then you see that in this way we can control the scene illumination and we have the, the contrast or less contrast and again we can illuminate our scene as needed so uh, you see in this way we are uh, illuminating using the HDR we have again the possibility to decide using the camera if we want to have more or less lighting just using also the ISO so you see in this way we are having less lighting inside our scene uh, we can uh, render without the camera modifier and we are just using the one we have there inside the viewport now you see that we have less lighting than before and we can control it again using the exposure if we like to control just with nothing we can go straight without the camera settings and render just with uh, our tools there so you see that we are just lighting with this one so we can go back to have a little bit more exposure and we can find the amount we like so uh, we can try to find also the uh, illumination we prefer so we can go there and change a little bit the position so let's go for example with something like that just to see how it looks different when we rotate our light you see that in this case we have more sun coming inside the scene so we have again to come back to the lighting and start compressing uh, the high value so you see we are going better and better to the side how much and in this case I think that this value will be enough uh, obviously out of the viewport you can uh, the window you can use whatever else and whatever you like let's go to have there something more neutral and see again the rendering you see that we have obviously a lot of lighting there inside the scene in this case because the material is white but this one is helping us to have a more precise lighting 
and we can decide how much we like to cut the highlight. So you see there, the illumination is better now because uh, we have the light that is uh, distributing a better lighting all around. Um, we can find, let's close. And obviously that's all, you have just to take care about uh, the uh, the illumination this way uh, I'm covering it because you know uh, the, the sunlight you have just to readjust it it's not a problem and if you like there we can find another position just to see how it looks so let's render from this point of view. We have some modifier uh, as over the object as the V-Ray modifier, but obviously you don't need it. So you see we are rendering also this one and it's really fast to start preparing the, la the right illumination without problems. And the quality is really, really high. Uh, in this case, we can leave the rendering. It will take a little bit, but uh, it will go to create uh, a really clean rendering uh, uh, without the grain and without artifacts. So, uh, this was just an introduction to Corona, just to understand how we can start to create basic lighting inside Corona to create an interior, for example, or if you like to start using the various uh, rendering parameters and the materials and the light. Uh, we'll be back really soon to create a complete rendering, for example, for this scene with all the materials to see how we can create something nice and something interesting. So I stopped rendering and then I will prepare the preview for you so you will see the final render uh, following the tutorial. So for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on Max Cookie to check for a new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye.